trial is underway now for six people charged with the murder of a Chicago rapper gunned down in the middle of the day in the Gold Coast. The FBG Duck murder trial is straight up wild. From drive-by shootings to alleged bounties, it's got more twists than a roller coaster. Recently, Martel Wiley stepped into the courtroom claiming he's been an undercover player since 2006. Lil Durk's name is floating around too, adding more spice to the drama. With masked informants, gang secrets, and a rapper's fate hanging in the balance, this trial's a real-life thriller. So buckle up, because this courtroom saga is keeping us on the edge. FBG Duck tragically lost his life in a drive-by shooting on August 4th, 2020 while he was out shopping with his girlfriend for his son's birthday outside Dolce & Gabbana in Chicago. Out of nowhere, four dudes in masks roll up in a car and start blasting Duck with like 38 bullets. In just 15 seconds, he takes a hit from around 21 shots. But that wasn't the end of it. His girl and some other person nearby caused some heat too and got wounded in the chaos. And guess what? The whole thing got caught on video. The cops saw that and connected the dots, traced the car back to the shooters, and ended up making a bunch of arrests. So, they grabbed Charles, C. Murder, Liggins, Kenneth, Kenny Robinson, to Carlos, Los, Offord, Christopher, C. Thing, Thomas, and Marcus Muwap Smart. Fast forward to April 2023, they grab another dude, Ralph Turpin, slapping him with charges like murder in aid of racketeering and conspiracy to commit murder in aid of racketeering, in connection to Duck's tragic end. A week before the whole thing went down, with FBG Duck getting shot, some real drama was already brewing. Apparently, a bounty, a cool $100,000, no less, was slapped on his head. A rap log dug up the crazy info. An FBI informant, based on a random tip they got back in August 2020, just after Duck's passing, dropped a hot name. Seems like King Vaughn might have been the one who started this whole bounty business. Word on the street is, Vaughn initially put up $50,000 for anyone who could take out Duck then feeling extra generous, or maybe just up in the ante. He allegedly doubled that to a whopping $100,000. Wild, right? And it doesn't stop there. This anonymous witness claims that after Duck was gone, Vaughn celebrated like there was no tomorrow. Allegedly, he treated everyone in his crew, the O Block, to some shiny new chains. Now, fast forward three years after Duck's tragic death, things finally started heating up in the courtroom. Jury selection was the first hurdle, with around 150 folks showing up to be screened. Out of that bunch, only 12 got picked to decide the fate of six alleged O-Block gang members accused of playing a part in Duck's murder. Now, the feds weren't messing around. They painted a picture of O-Block as a tight-knit operation, not just some random dudes hanging out. Think meetings, dues, respect ladders. The higher you climbed, the more you earned through, let's just say, violent activities. This wasn't your average street gang. They argued that this was a whole criminal enterprise and Duck's killing was just another rung on the ladder. But it wasn't just the feds slinging accusations. Prosecutors claimed these six guys practically bragged about the whole thing in public. Talk about bad PR, right? And guess what? Duck's own mom threw some major shade in a recent interview, basically saying the same thing. My son's killers can stop yapping about it. Duck's mother wasn't also afraid to share her thoughts on who she believed was behind her son's death. And yeah, you guessed it. King's Vaughn name came up more than once. FBG Duck's mom didn't just point fingers though, she went all in, piercing together how she thought things went down. Remember how Duck's location got leaked? She had her own theories on that too. Now it's important to remember that these are just her thoughts, her side of the story. But with everything that went down, it's no surprise she wanted to make her voice heard. Now FBG Duck's trials blown up like a viral video, spilling all over YouTube and rap blogs. It got more twists and turns than a roller coaster in a haunted house. One of the biggest mysteries revolves around OTF Muwap, one of the alleged killers. The feds are convinced that they placed him at the car dealership where the getaway car ended up after the shooting. But guess what? The salesman on duty that day says he never saw Muwap anywhere near the place. This makes things even more confusing. Now, let's rewind a bit and talk about the getaway car. There's another dude named Los involved, and guess what? He actually bought the car from that same dealership. But after Duck's tragic death, the car became a hot potato, caught on camera during the whole thing. The car salesman even says Los was already planning to return it, even before Duck went down. Fast forward to trial time. The car salesman took the stand and spilled some tea. He said he sold the car to Los, but then noticed something fishy about Los's paperwork. Fake job info and all that jazz. Apparently, the salesman wasn't too fond of this shady stuff 
so the dealership called Los, asking him to bring the car back. But Los wasn't about to let his investment go down the drain. He had put money into that car, tinted the windows, the whole shebang. So he strikes a deal. He'll return it, but only if he gets his money back for the fancy tent and his deposit. Guess what happens on the day Duck gets killed? Los allegedly returns the car. The salesman remembers seeing Los's baby mama in the car, but still insists he didn't see Muwap, the alleged killer, anywhere. The feds claim that they have video evidence of Muwap at the dealership, but if the salesman didn't see him, what does that mean for the case? The courtroom saga wasn't just about cars and shady deals. Nope. It got even crazier when Los's baby mama was supposed to take the stand. But hold on, things got messy real quick. The defense saw her as a major player in the story and didn't want her anywhere near the jury. Afraid she had heard too much already and might sway the case, they threw a whole fuss, arguing that her testimony would be tainted because she had been sitting in the courtroom the whole time, soaking up all the details. The judge had to step in and calm the courtroom down when the defense's concerns against the right to a fair trial. It was a whole legal back and forth more dramatic than a rap battle. Hold up. Before we dive deeper into the courtroom drama, let's talk about Lil Durk. Yeah, the rapper's name keeps popping up in this whole FBG duck situation, and it's got folks' ears perked up. Back in August, rumors flew like wildfire, whispering that duck might be linked to the case. Leaked FBI files floating around online supposedly named Duck and his brother as players in the whole mess. Now, this directly clashes with Dirk's recent public stance. He's been all about stopping the violence, preaching peace like a modern-day Gandhi with a mic. But with his name swirling around the case, it's hard to ignore the whispers. Still, one thing seems to be keeping Dirk out of legal hot water. His lack of direct ties to O Block. He might be a big name in the rap game, but when it comes to the streets, he seems to be chilling on the sidelines, at least officially. The courtroom got real intense when Rakeem Wilton, better known as FBG Butter, took the stand. The dude wasn't just some random witness, he was thick in the scene, practically family with Duck, and even had a kid with his sister. But what dropped everyone's jaws was his story about K.I., this tough-as-nails gang assassin who met a tragic end back in 2014. See, FBG Butter and K.I. were tight, closer than two peas in a pot. When K.I. was taken out in the shooting, Butter was right there, caught astray himself. So here he was, years later, spitting truth bombs in court admitting in plain English that it was King Vaughn, the big dog of a rival crew, who allegedly pulled the trigger. FBG Butter told how King Vaughn stood right over K.I., pumping bullets into her again and again. Now, FBG Butter wasn't just throwing shade, he had proof. He dropped details, specific things that only someone close to the situation would know. This wasn't some street gossip, this was real talk from a guy who was right there in the thick of it all. And that's what made it so powerful, so damn chilling. Before all these revelations, FBG Butter had already gone public, saying straight up that King Vaughn wasn't the one who took down K.I. See, there's this unwritten rule on the streets, a no snitching code, and FBG Butter was playing by the old playbook. But then, things took a turn. King Vaughn got caught up in his own crossfire, months after Duck's tragic shooting. And something shifted in FBG Butter. Maybe the rules felt different. Maybe he just couldn't keep it bottled up any longer. So yeah, FBG Butter's testimony came after some twists and turns, and it sure left everyone with a lot to think about. So things got even crazier when a masked YouTube dude, Martel Wiley, from Trenches News, walked into the courtroom. This once anonymous online sleuth had ditched his mask and became a key witness against six guys accused of taking out rapper FBG Duck. Now, some folks might raise an eyebrow about this whole thing. Apparently, the feds had been paying Wiley some serious cash, like $25,000 spread out over 15 installments, for his help. Special Agent Doyle from the FBI spilled the beans on how Wiley had been their go-to guy for intel, digging up social media posts and cracking surveillance footage like a digital detective. Turns out, Wiley knew both the victim and the defendants, like the back of his hand, even pointing them out in surveillance footage like a seasoned detective. And the bombshell, he claims, this ain't no sudden switch up. He's been an undercover player since way back in 2006. This meant he's been living a double life for years. He told the jury that right after Duck got killed in 2020, he reached out to the cops and offered to help. See, Wiley knew Duck well. He was tied with Duck's brother and even called Duck one of the coolest, smoothest dudes he ever met. But here's the twist. Martel wasn't just a fan. He used to be deep in the gang scene himself. He explained that he joined Black Disciples faction when he was 15, 
then moved to Parkway Gardens later. But things got rough in 2010, and he had a falling out with some folks from his old crew. They even shot him. That was a wake-up call for Wiley, and he decided to switch sides. He left the gang life behind and started using his voice. Now, Wiley's all about leaving that street life behind. He used his online platform to call out gang violence and encourage kids to stay away from the same path that he took. He even told the jury, I'm trying to help the city be a better place. The whole courtroom drama is still unfolding and the truth is still hiding in the shadows. We've had masked informants, gang secrets spilling out like spilled soda, and enough finger pointing to fill a stadium. But the big question on everyone's mind is this, is Lil Durk really involved or is he just getting caught in the crossfire of rumors and speculation? Well. The trial is just getting started, and the twists and turns are just beginning to unravel. For now, all we can do is keep our eyes peeled and ears open.